Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're looking at another mysterious Axeman surplus gadget. Axeman is an amazing local store with all kinds of weird electronics, junk, surplus, magical land of mystery that I like to buy all kinds of weird junk from. As you can see from my t-shirt, Axeman is one of my favorite stores, and when they had this mysterious item for only $15, I couldn't possibly pass it up. I'm pretty sure this is some kind of satellite antenna. It looks like the kind of thing that you would see on top of a semi-truck or an RV or a boat. Probably some kind of tracking unit. It's got the main antenna radome thing here. And then we have this uh, big, beefy chonker of a cable. So uh, we've got a weird proprietary end here. We've got this interface block thing that uh, appears to have a serial port. Uh, probably some power and I don't know what this other one is, some kind of vehicle data. And then it actually has an Ethernet port, or at least RJ45. So this probably goes to some kind of in-vehicle network. I'm not super familiar with vehicle area networks, but I have heard of them. I know that a lot of uh, fleet semi-trucks have an internal tracking and computer system to monitor speed, accidents, safety, location, all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm suspecting that that's what this is for. We'll try to interface with that cable a little bit later on. I'm definitely going to have to figure out the power for it. But first up, let's see what's in the radome here. And on the back, it's a Zeta XATA CPX5 Fleet GPRS SAT and Xeta antenna. So it seems to have something to do with uh, GPRS, cellular modem, uh, satellite, and Xeta, I think is kind of a industrial type Bluetooth or local area network type of deal. We have a bunch of different MAC addresses. We've got an M10 ID, an XB MAC, and a Wi-Fi MAC. We also have an Ethernet MAC, an IMSI number, and an ICC ID. So this appears to have all kinds of stuff in it. Half the reason I buy stuff like this is just so I can take all the screws out and see what's in there. Yeah, there does seem to be some kind of goop holding it together, probably for waterproofing. Okay, I think we've got all the goop under control. So there we go. Inside, we have rather large main board. I believe this here is a GPS antenna. We've got a uh, protected cover here. We've got, uh, this is kind of a cool little antenna here. This appears to be a directional antenna aiming up. So uh, it says it's Digi International. Uh, this could be some kind of Iridium satellite antenna. I'm not 100% sure. Some little stumpy antennas here on each side. Those could be for Wi-Fi or for that uh, XB thing. And then there's this little antenna jack here. And when we popped the cover off, that has this strip antenna on the inside. Yeah, not sure if that's a satellite thing, not sure if that is a cellular thing. But um, yeah, lots of communications on this. Lots of different antenna elements. Let's see if this PCB antenna comes off along with everything else. Yep, it does. So you can see a close-up of that. that that's kind of neat. So, inside here, we have the brains of the operation. This looks like a single board computer of some sort. We've got, um, looks like a SIM card over here. So that would be for the cellular modem. We've got some other stuff underneath. There appears to be a battery. Um, and I have to extract a little more of this to see what else is in this electronic stack. And then uh, you can see lots of antenna wires coming out onto this big board. Yeah, neat little board there. Um, yeah, we've got yet another communication sub-assembly. We've got uh, some mounting points for, it looks like stuff that wasn't used, maybe an SSD, some other uh, sub-assembly here. Uh, not 100% sure about that. So it looks like this is the Wi-Fi unit. Yeah, lots of interesting pins and pin pads here. We have JTAG. Uh, WMP debug, WSP, JTAG, looks like maybe I2C. There's a bunch of interesting stuff here that, again, if I were better at uh, small electronics like this, I could probably interface with this, reprogram it, do some interesting stuff with it. This is one of those projects I might have to rely on folks in the comments uh, throwing me suggestions, uh, giving me software ideas for how to interface with this, uh, what things I could do with it other than what it was originally intended for. And then if nothing else, this is definitely a good source of interesting parts. I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of just weird stuff in here that I could play around with and 
learn more about some of these little microcontrollers, uh, some of these little communications protocols. Yeah, this is interesting. It's kind of built into these uh, plastic risers. And it's also glued down to the bottom of the unit, so... Alright, we have um, quite a beefy little communication block here, so... This uh, appears to be something a little more powerful than Wi-Fi, a little more powerful than even the cellular modem. So, let's see. I'd have to take the bottom board off to trace out where this antenna is going, but I suspect this is a satellite communications unit. I suspect this is talking to this antenna, so it's taking the GPS data in, uh, it's possibly taking in load data, um, information from the truck, uh, engine data, possibly information from the cargo if there are sensors or transmitters on the cargo, and then processing it through here and sending it all up to something like an Iridium satellite for uh, bouncing back down to Earth, bouncing off to the company headquarters, and then they can just monitor their whole fleet remotely. Looking more closely at the board here, it does say uh, satellite, and then we've got some more debug pads. We've got TX, RX, ground, and plus 3.3 volts, so this has its own debug right on the satellite subboard. I'm trying to make sense of this interface box to figure out how I get power to this, and I found a list of all kinds of different connection standards, but I haven't quite figured out where you put the electricity in here. I guess I'll just have to take it apart. I rarely get a chance to use this massive wrench, but when I do, it turns out it's for an electronics project. I never would have anticipated that. Okay, so here's our interface breakout, and I'm still kind of mystified about where the electricity goes. I'm looking up all the part numbers and model numbers I can find on this thing, and so far it is either a roller bearing, a hand car wash, a house for sale in Wisconsin, a secrecy order from the Federation of American Scientists, or a book on Argentina. So, yeah, um, not finding much to go on here. Well, I found a pinout for this end of the cable, so now I just need to figure out how it translates to the round end, and then where it goes through here. So we're just going to have to trace everything out with the multimeter. And suddenly Donnie would like to help with this project. I believe these are LEDs over on the side, so if this has power, I would think one of those LEDs should light up, so that's just kind of sanity checking here that I am actually getting power into the board. All right. Given it power, we have a blue LED on the board. So we are, oh, now we have an orange LED. So something is working. And I've downloaded the Digi Device Discovery Tool, so I'm gonna see if that can locate this device on the network. Um, we did just get a network pop-up here. And the Discovery Tool has found a connect port device. So yes, we are making progress. If anyone is interested, this is the pinout that I got to work, so on the larger 8-pin uh, connector on that little breakout board. Power 12 volt plus is up here on the upper right. Ground is on the lower left. The ignition is just below the power in. Still don't know if we necessarily need that ignition sense, but there it is. I'm gonna button this back up before I go too much further because all these antennas are kind of integral to uh, the covers and the case, and I don't want it trying to transmit and no antennas connected. That might damage something. I believe it's 3G or maybe even 2G, so it's not going to get anywhere because those systems have been shut down in the U.S., but um, yeah, we still don't really want it to transmit without an antenna. My Chrome browser refused to talk to this thing due to an SSL version mismatch, but Firefox is perfectly happy to. And we've got all kinds of options in the web interface. We've even got a tutorial. How many modern gadgets these days give you a tutorial on how to use them? Usually you just get a completely opaque user interface with all kinds of confusing options. But this thing wants you to use it. That is really cool. And we can go through and change all kinds of settings. There wasn't even a password on this, so that's kind of cool. Uh, looks like we do have a variety of frequencies we can use, although I think all of these are a little bit older 
this shore link seems to be a proprietary digi thing that works over the cellular network. Let's see, we can look at this uh, XB thing. It says the uh, XB network is not available. Let's see, we've got uh, Python applications. We can run Python code right on the single board computer inside the antenna. Position data, oh, geofences, that's kind of fun. It can send an alarm or I guess uh, phone home and rat out the truck driver when he pulls into the strip club. We've got network statistics. We've got Wi-Fi statistics. It looks like this one's configured as a client and it's trying to find a network. Now what I'm not seeing anywhere on the web interface is any mention of that Iridium satellite modem that's in there. Uh, we're just seeing the Mobile Zero cellular interface, the WLAN Zero wireless interface, and the ETH Zero wired internet device. I have to say, I am really impressed with the documentation and help files on here. They go into incredible amounts of detail, lots of information on protocols and settings and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, compared to modern gadgets where you get just a couple page PDF file, this is a fantastic amount of user documentation. So we can also console into this thing over the Ethernet port. I'm just uh, doing a telnet to that IP address. We do have an orbcom command. so. That could actually be an Orbcom antenna and not Iridium. I've been giving you the wrong information this whole time. It is not an Iridium modem, it is an Orbcom modem. That is another uh, low Earth orbit, Internet of Things satellite system. Uh, I've actually played around with that a little bit before. You can actually uh, snoop on this a little bit, see some of the packets coming down. They're all encrypted, so you can't actually see anybody's data but you can see some of the satellite traffic. Yeah, it looks like we can do uh, display orbcom, set orbcom, info orbcom, and then uh, we've got another document we can refer to for additional commands. I brought the whole unit outside just to see if it will get any packets from the orbcom system or if I can get a GPS fix or get any more information out of it than I was down in the basement. It's hard to read this outside, but the orbcom modem is powered on and network readiness says it's ready. And now we are getting a signal strength, an SNR ratio. We've got a Doppler shift. We have a satellite, number 37 in view. We're on downlink channel 100, and it still says ready. Okay, well that's really all we've got for the Exata or Digi satellite tracking unit. I don't have a really great uh, use for this thing. It's probably just gonna go out on the pile of potentially interesting, but still slightly mysterious satellite hardware, an ever-growing pile in my garage. If anyone out there in the comments has suggestions for how to use this thing as is, or how to part it out in a useful way to make something else out of those internal components, or even sign up for an Orbcom account and use this as an Orbcom modem, I know almost nothing about that. I've tried looking up online, I've tried uh, poking around, and all the Orbcom data out there just says, call us, you know, have your account reps call our account reps and we'll do businessy type stuff. There really isn't much information out there for the casual experimenter, for the hobbyist, so it's not really intended for that. It's intended for a fleet of a thousand semi-trucks and not for just uh, casual curious people, unfortunately. As a casual curious person, I have had a lot of fun tearing this down, seeing what's in there, talking to it on the laptop, seeing what kind of stuff it can do, looking at the satellite packets coming down. We never sent anything up to the satellite. Uh, this is not provisioned or configured to transmit up to the satellite. It doesn't have an active account on it, so I don't have any way to send two-way data. If anyone out there knows how you get a cheap evaluation or development Orbcom account and how to talk to it with one of these uh, Digi systems, I'd love to hear about it. That would be a lot of fun, and heck, it'd be a lot of fun to put this on a vehicle on a boat, a car, or whatever, and use it for some kind of remote monitoring. But if any of that happens, it will all have to be in a future video. Stay tuned to see what else we come up with for random Axeman stuff like this. Uh, check out my other videos for other Axeman junk, other random electronics, satellite things, radio things that I've found, built, or experimented with. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.